Um, in addition to the water, you got your detergent, which is going to be PCA5, booster, and percent. if we're doing residential carpet. Main thing about PCA5 is pH diluted is about 9.2 and it's used at 0.4 ounces per gallon. How do you measure that? This magical device right here with which most carpet cleaners are unfamiliar it's called a measuring cup. It's not the glug method. Say you have 100 gallons of water in that solution tank, how much PCA formula fiber are you going to add by the measuring cup? 100 times 0 0.4 is 40. Thank you. Nobody, I think most of you already knew, but you were afraid that it might be wrong, so I'm not going to say anything. It might appear stupid. 40 ounces of powder. The main thing here is, as Kevin mentioned yesterday, it's critical that you pre-dissolve that. All that means is a gallon jug, you put hot water into it, pour in your powder, shake it up real good, let it settle down a little bit because not all of it's going to dissolve, put that in a tank, fill it back up with real hot water, shake it up real good, pour the rest in. Any of the little bit that's not dissolved will dissolve fine in the tank. If that's important to get it as much as you can pre-dissolved. In addition to that, we add booster. It's a liquid so we don't have to pre-dissolve. We can just pour that directly into the tank. No big deal. How much do you use? It's real simple. However much powder you use, you divide by three. It's very straightforward. And percent. Percent is a perfume oil. And you only use two ounces per gallon. It is critical that you don't get carried away. That's all it takes. You ever been stuck in an elevator with a little old lady whose olfactory nerves died 20 years ago? <laughs> don't do that to your customer. You don't want to do that to your customer. The purpose of the percent is to leave the room smelling fresh and clean. And that's it. Barely detectable. That's the main thing. We have all these flavors. The reality is 60-70% of the sales are lemon. Lemon pledge. A lemony clean, etc. Lemon and the, and who is your customer? The husband or the wife? Yeah. The wife is the, is the customer. That's reality. The second most popular is orange, which is my favorite. Everybody has their personal favorites, but I noticed that most people prefer the lemon and the orange. 
PCA, we do have other cleaning agents. There's a good probability you'll never buy any other cleaning agent from us. The rest of them have specific purposes that may or may not apply to you. For example, if you're doing commercial work, a lot of commercial work, then you may want to be using the PCA Formula 4. It's only for commercial work because the pH is over 11. Does it clean better than PCA 5? Yeah. All other things being equal, remember I said about pH and dye, all other things being equal, the higher the pH, the better the cleaning. No question about it. Because all soil is acid. All of your soils are on the acid side. But you'd use the PCA4 just the same way. Now I frequently have this question asked. Because you may be doing residential during the day and commercial at night. And your tank is almost empty. But there's still some PCA5 solution in there. Can I put, fill it back up and put PCA4 in there? Yes. But you can't go the other way. Your tank is down to a quarter full and it's got PCA4 in it. You fill it up with water and add PCA5. Chemically, they're compatible, but the pH is above 10 now. Does it track up more with the higher pH, though? After track up more? No, no, leave any kind no, of no, not at all. And the reality is PCA4 dissolves much easier than PCA5. It's our old formula, except when we came out with PCA5, I thought, well, if PCA4 now is only for commercial, then I'll, no holes are barred on, on pH, so I juiced it up. It's stronger than it used to be. LCA-256 I mentioned earlier. So liquid, the 256 stands for diluted 1 to 256 parts of water, half an ounce per gallon. It's a lower pH product. Purpose of it is simply where you've got some bleeding problem, then you can, might be able to go with this. No need for you to have this at this point unless you run into a situation where you need a product like that. Super LCA. Kevin was talking a lot ye uh, yesterday about going portable and how when you go portable like to the 19th floor you'll be lucky to find five gallons of hot water. What he did not mention was what do you need to get that PCA5 to dissolved? Hot water. That's the reality. That's what this product is for. It's, it is, first of all, we're normally talking commercial. There I want a high pH. It's a liquid, so I don't have to worry about trying desperately to find some hot water to dissolve the powder in. I, if I, I want to use as much hot water as I can, but it's not curtains if I don't have some hot water. And that's what the Super LCA is for. It's again for commercial work where I have to go portable. I can't get my little fingers on to very much hot water. We still have the internal uh, heater, but that takes a long time to get the temperature up there. So that's what this is for. The pH diluted at one ounce per gallon is over 11. It's obviously not for residential work. It's strictly for commercial work. Another specialty product, Microban Clean Carpet Sanitizer. This is the only product to the clean that is EPA registered clean and sanitize carpet. Nobody else makes a product with that claim. Any, any product that makes a claim of sanitizing has to be registered with the Environmental Protection Agency. And it is. There's some real nice brochures that go with it. So that when you're cleaning, you're also sanitizing. What that means is, of course you can't put this, it's a cleaner and a sanitizer. You don't put that into your regular solution tank. This you put into a base unit or a portable machine to use that way. <clears throat> Where would you use this? Well, one picture there is of a little baby. But the big one would be daycare centers, places like that. Where do they want the carpet sanitized? <coughs> would you charge extra for this? <coughs> of course. What's interesting about this is I had one customer I can think of in particular who called all excited because he said, I did a, I did a bid on a daycare center. for something like six people bidding. He said, I was the highest bidder. I quoted this and got the job. Because nobody else could make this claim. Some of them would say, oh, we use real hot water. That sanitizes. No, it doesn't. This is the only thing that's registered by the EPA, recognized by the EPA. 
and sanitizing and cleaning the carpet. Is that what you would use in a basement, like after water damage and everything? No, there you spray the down microband that we'll talk about <coughs> later. You can use it for that, but you're going to have to take care of the pad and the whole thing. It is primarily a specialty cleaning agent where you want the carpet sanitized. A brand new baby, the housewife is really concerned about a little one. And she wants it not only clean, I want the best thing possible, and I want it sanitized, that type of thing. That's the market for that. Again, very specialized market for which you pay extra. The brochures will help you sell it a lot. Yeah. Okay. What is the cost to clean the house with that as opposed to not using it? The cost of clean, to cleaning the house, your biggest cost is labor anyhow, but the cost, chemical cost is going to be twice. So it's going to cost you a dollar instead of 50 cents. That's right. Okay. And you're going to so charge. So how much more do you charge? Yeah. I guess you, you charge, guys have a ballpark. You, charge, we, you would charge at least half again as much. Okay. Charge extra for these things. Just like you the other As the rent or freeze rent. As the detergent itself. That in the base unit, you clean with it. There is a pre-spray for the product if you want to use a pre-spray. It's designed for that. I'm having to speed through a lot of this because, uh, again, I could spend days talking, but so I have. I mean, that catalog that I just finished is 552 pages. There's a lot of, there's an enormous amount of information in that catalog. Natural fiber cleaner. This is an unusual cleaner. We don't make it. It contains a reducing bleach. The big thing here is it is for Haitian cotton and some of you are asking about cleaning sisal. There's Haitian cotton. Does anybody in here know what Haitian cotton is? Don't see it very much anymore. Haitian cotton was where they kept the cotton seeds in. And the problem with the cotton seeds was when it got wet, they would swell up and explode and leak out black, brown oil, and you just locked yourself a sofa. They used to be very popular because it was pretty. It had these little black dots in it, and it looked real pretty. And, but, but the cleaning tag would be, as, as uh, Dan was going through yesterday, yes, it would be solvent clean only. Even solvent cleaning on Haitian cotton is dangerous. Or it would put an X for the cleaning tag. You know what X really means? Dan says it means vacuuming only. No, it means, hey, stupid, the salesman sold you a piece of junk that can't be cleaned by, by any stretch of the imagination. You're an idiot for having bought this. You've just been screwed. Yeah, it's exactly what no one in his right mind would deliberately buy a sofa or chair that can't be cleaned. That is so stupid that the manufacturers do that. And of course, the guy that's selling that sofa or chair in the retail room sure isn't going to tell Mrs. Jones, hey, you shouldn't buy this because you can never clean. If something gets spilled on it, it's over. You can throw it away. That's, I don't understand manufacturers, but that's the reality. You used to about an ounce per gallon in your base unit. Let me give you an example. Remember this piece of sisal I showed you earlier? That a guy that cleans rugs messed up? We cleaned it twice with natural fiber cleaner. We cleaned it in one direction and then we cleaned it perpendicular because I wanted it to dry even. I didn't want to take a chance on a streak or anything like that. And then I mentioned how we had that white cotton border. All I did there was I took a piece of metal so that I wouldn't get overspray on the sisal and guess what I used onto that? Voila. You guys are terrific, aren't you? 40 volume, clear hydrogen peroxide, bang back the way it's supposed to look. No big deal. <coughs> Here's one that was brought in by a, a local customer. That's after cleaning and treating it, I don't know how many times with brownout. Brought it in desperate. You see, look, at, look at all the water spotting. This is cotton. It's a cotton print. It's, a, it's not for the floor. It was actually a wall decoration. In fact, it had a wooden dowel across the top so there could be hums. Look at look what happened here too. Shrank like crazy. You got it so wet so many times trying to correct the problem. That's after cleaning with natural fiber cleaner. Again, you'd have to do that in the basin. You notice also bottom edge is straight. 
natural fiber cleaner didn't do that. That was a matter of after cleaning and hanging, of going out there every 30 minutes, just simply grabbing a hold of where it pulled up, because the wooden dowel was still on there, and just pulling it down, holding it for a minute, letting go, going about my business, go out there in half an hour. I did that all day, and voila, no problem. 